Hey everyone, this is Joe. I'm the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning into my channel. I want to sincerely apologize. It seems like it's been forever since I've posted up a video. And the reason simply has been is we've had hardly any clear nights. The few clear nights that we have had in the last two months, I've either been on nights where I had to work early the next morning or where we've had a full moon. So my imaging has really suffered so far this late spring and early summer. But I finally got out the other night and began to work on a project shooting SH2-112, Sharpless 112. Now this is a small emission nebula that I had never heard of before, but came across it in Stellarium, did a little bit of research on it online, and got started imaging it. I collected over 12 hours of data on this object, and I'm really pleased with the results. Now, I was imaging with my Celestron 8-inch telescope and the ZWO-533MC Pro camera. The more I work with this combination, the more I'm enjoying it. It has been a wonderful, wonderful addition to my arsenal, and I'm uh, really pleased with the results that I've been getting. So I want to show you how I stacked up the data in AstroPixel Processor and went about producing a RGB image out of my H and O data, my hydrogen and alpha, al, uh, oxygen data that I collected with the Optolong L Enhanced filter. So stick around, I'll show you how I processed it and then the final picture, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in. So the first thing I want to do here is kind of show you where this object is. HH SH2-112, Sharpless 112, is not a very familiar image. In fact, it doesn't have a cool name. You know, it's not like the Eagle Nebula or uh, the Flame Nebula or the Orion Nebula that have some cool name. It, it's just given the Sharpless catalog name. It's located about 5,600 light years away from Earth in the constellation Cygnus. And so if we go over here and look at this, this is a Stellarium setup. You can see here, faintly going across the sky, this is the Milky Way. And as we zoom in, you'll notice here's the star Deneb and Seder. So these are two very, very bright stars in the constellation Cygnus that make it rather easy to find. You'll know, notice as I zoom in, look at all of this area of nebula that's coming up. This is the famous North American Nebula, along with the Pelican Nebula, sitting right here. Two very famous areas of nebulosity. Down here is the Veil Nebula, very, very popular among um, astrophotographers. Over here is the Crescent Nebula, right there is the Crescent Nebula. Um, and there's all kinds of areas over, over here all around. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of nebulosity in this particular area of the sky. And so if we plug in SH2-112 and we'll zoom in here, you'll notice it's not even really showing up on Stellarium. Huh. There's not even a picture of it on Stellarium. And part of the reason for that is this is just not a very popular target to shoot. And yet, it is really quite exquisite. It's a very pretty area. And I noticed just on Astro Bin, uh, there's uh, quite a few, uh, let me just uh, kind of show you here. There's quite a few pictures taken of it. Let me pull this over here. If I pull over to Astro Bin. There's quite a few pictures of it. There's some here that have been taken, and I, I don't want to steal anybody's credit here, but you know, here is uh, uh, one taken, and uh, this is in the Hubble palette, and uh, really, really pretty by Euros Gorgonic. And so there are some folks that have taken pictures of it. This is not one that pops up very often. And uh, so I wanted to just kind of show it to you, kind of show you where it's located. It's not real hard to find in the night sky. Uh, just find Deneb and basically go up. And if you, if you find Deneb and Seder, you're going to be able to find this little area. And it's right above the Pelican Nebula and North American Nebula. So if you can find those, just look a little bit above uh, Deneb, and you're going to find it. And, um, and it's a really beautiful image. So let's go over. Let me show you some of the data that I've collected and how I've put my picture together.
Okay, step number one in this uh, image processing um, procedure or workflow is to stack all of our images. So you can see here I've taken my 249 light frames, 20 flats, 60 darks, and 20 dark flats. And the first thing I want to do is go ahead and stack these and separate out my HA and my O3 data. Now I've been shooting this, this data with the uh, Optolong L Enhanced Dual Narrow Band Filter. And so what I want to do now is go up here to an Astro Pixel Processor, go to Tab 0. I want to come down and I want to go to HA03 Extract HA. This is going to remove all of my HA data. Then I, on my data, yours might be a little bit different, but what I found works best for me is I'm going to stack 80% of these frames. I'm going to integrate them with uh, average, average uh, integrate, with uh, weighting this with star shapes. I want, to, I want to weight it with the star shapes. I went with Windsorized rejection, local normalization rejection, uh, on my local normalization correction, I went with second degree LNC with six iterations and a 15% multiband blending. Okay, so once I've done that, I click on integrate. Then I come back over to tab zero. I need to do this a second time. Click on HA03 extract 03. And when it's done, I will have then two. Uh, integrations of my HA data and my O3. So let's go over and look now at the little bit of the processing that I'm going to do here in Astral Pixel Processor with these two frames. Okay, the second step in this process is I'm going to do just a little bit of work on my HA and O3 integrations here in Astral Pixel Processor. So let me show you what I've got. This is my HA integration. This comes right out of the stacking algorithm. You can see I've got a little bit of stacking aberrations here around the edges, so I'm going to need to crop it a little bit. Here is my O3 data. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is go to Tools to Batch Crop and I want to crop these, okay? And so once I've cropped it, let me show you what it looks like. This is my HA, this is my O3, and I've cropped them, okay? Now you can see I've got a little bit of a gradient in here uh, from a little bit of light pollution, my neighbors' uh, spotlights on their houses and cars going by and that kind of stuff, create a little bit of a, uh, of a gradient. So what to remove that, I'm gonna go over here to remove light pollution. And when I'm done with it, this is my HA data with that gradient removed. You can see it, it helps me to see a little bit of this darkened details in and around and see the nebulosity a little bit better. Then I did the same thing with my O3 data. Okay. Once I've done this, I've changed the stretch and I move I just reduced the stretch just a little bit. I took it back to 10% background, 5 sigma, 3.5 base and saved this as a TIFF. I did the same thing with the HA data. Just kind of knocked it back a little bit and then went over and saved this as a TIFF file. Now I'm ready to go over to Photoshop and take my HA and my O3 channels and create a gr synthetic green channel uh, so that I can do an RGB picture. So let's go over to Photoshop. Okay, now I'm here in Photoshop and I have my HA and my O3 files opened. So my HA is going to be the red channel the O3 will be my blue channel. I could just do an HOO integration if I've wanted, or I can create a green channel and make a regular RGB picture. And so that's what I'm going to do. So first thing I want to do is go up here to File, select New, okay? And I want to make sure that these, uh, the widths and height are set to the same dimensions as my um, integrations. 
make sure I've selected uh, RGB color for color mode, then click on create. This is going to give me a white box. Okay. Now I want to come over to channels. And what I want to do here is go to this red channel first. Go to the red channel, select it, come back over here and open up my HA integration. And then I want to click on Control A to select all, Control C to copy. And then what I'm going to do is go back over here to my new picture, go to the red channel and click and, and, and click on Control V, and I'm going to paste that. HA data into the red channel. Now I'm going to down here and select blue and I want to go over here to my O3 integration. Same thing, control A to select it all, control C to copy. Now I want to move back over here to my new picture, go to the blue channel and press control V to paste it in. So now I have my red and my blue channel. Now I want to click on green. And what I want to do is go over to this little tool here in my actions. This is Astronomy Tools version 1.6.2. This is available from Pro Digital Software. It is a great little package of actions that will help you a lot with your astrophotography um, uh, processing. So what now I want to do is I'm going to select Synthesize Green Channel from Red and Blue, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Go, this little arrow button right here, or Play button, and I'm just going to simply select OK for each of these options. And you'll see what it does. It is going to create a green channel. So now, if we look, I have my full RGB uh, image. This is the hydrogen alpha data that I shot uh, earlier. Let me just, uh, yeah. So I can show it to you each one. This is my uh, O3. This is my HA. This is my synthetic green. When I put them all together, then I have an RGB image. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to save that and then I can close out my O3 and my HA data and we can continue to process this picture. Okay, so you can see here I've got my RGB image that we just created here opened up. And I could just process it from right here. There's a lot of options that I have. Honestly, that's not a bad picture. It looks pretty good. But what I'd like to do is stretch out this nebula a little bit more and try to see if I could bring out a little bit more of the details. You can see I've got a lot of faint nebulosity out here. But I think if I stretched it a little bit harder that I could, I could get. The problem is, of course, if I try to go over here and try to do a curves adjustment to bring out that nebula, it starts to blow out my stars a little bit. So what I want to do is protect my stars. And the way I'm going to do that is to go over here and use StarNet++. This is a very simple program uh, that will allow you to create a starless picture. In fact, let me show you. This is the starless picture that was created by StarNet++. It removed all the stars from this picture, and there it is. And it's real simple to use. All you've got to do is download this. Um, if you're interested in finding it, let me show you real quick. I'll put this link um, in the... Um, I'll put this link into the uh, description for this video. But this is, uh, this is an article by Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard, and he walks through all that you need to know about how to use this and even provides you a link with how to download it. Okay, and so Trevor, of course, is, um, is incredible at astrophotography, and so I'm going to give him a little plug here. Uh, this is how I learned to use it, and uh, it will give you the download. And very, very simple. All you actually have to do is drag and drop your file in there, and it will create this image. 
Okay, now that I have this, there's a couple of things that I want to do. First thing I'm going to do is, you'll see here I've got a little bit of a star artifact. One of the bright stars has kind of left a little bit of an artifact. And I want to kind of get rid of that. So what I'm going to use is the clone tool. See this right here? This is the clone tool. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to come over here very close with this little round circle. And you can change the size of this circle right here. You can make it bigger. Okay, or you can make it smaller. Okay, once you get it to the size that you want, all right, then you're going to go over here and go right around this area and, and to an area that looks good and click on Alt and then let, uh, right click. Okay, once you've done that, then you can go over to the area you want to fix and you, you've, you've created a, a stamp here. And then you're just going to clone that area back on. And you see that kind of reduces that down a little bit, hides that area. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to do a little bit of a noise reduction on this picture before I stretch it any harder. There's a lot of noise uh, reduction tools you can use. You could go up here. I could use Camera Raw if I wanted to. And just go over here to, I'm sorry, not basic, but to detail. And I could go and pull up the color noise a little bit, reduction and noise reduction. And I can cut back on this noise. I could sharpen the picture just a little bit. And I could make, maybe do some basic adjustments with that. Uh, another way that you could do that if you wanted to is you could go over here and you could just simply uh, go to filter and go to noise, reduce noise. Okay, and you could use that tool if you wanted to. The tool I like to use is Topaz Labs Denoise, Denoise AI. So I'm going to select on that. Now, this is a paid product. You have to pay for this. And, um, but it will uh, go through and do a uh, model of, of it. And it will reduce. You can see here, this is the suggestion that it has. And I'm pretty happy with that. You can see it's reduced the noise down a good bit in the picture, uh, did a little bit of sharpening, click on apply, and we'll apply this to my image in Photoshop. And I like to do that here just so that I'm not uh, having to come back and deal with the noise or increasing the noise. I kind of knock some of that noise down right away. Now I'm going to go over here to image, I'm going to go to my curves, and I'm going to put a mark right about here and one right about here and I'm just going to stretch out some of that detail and brighten up that nebula a little bit. How much you do of this is completely up to you, okay? And so I'm going to go right about there. This gives me a pretty nice curve, brightens things up real nice for me. Now I'm going to press OK. Okay, so you could do a lot of other things here if you wanted. You could do any adjustments that you wanted. Uh, I think I'm going to come down here and I see this little bright spot right down here along the edge. I'm going to try to fix that a little bit. I'm going to use the uh, spot healing brush and I'm just going to kind of go down along that and see if I can't get rid of a little bit of that. Being right there on the edge is kind of a tough spot. I'm not sure that that's really doing much for it. Maybe it's improving a little bit. Make it a little bit less uh, intrusive there. All right, that's a little bit better. Okay, now the question is, what are we going to do now? We have the stars over here and we have our starless image. How do we add the stars back into this image? Well, the way we do that is to come over here. We want to basically remove the nebula out of this picture. And the way we can do that is simply go up here. We're in our uh, RGB image. We go up here to Image, go down to Apply Image. Now what we want to do is select our starless picture. Okay? And then we want to collect the blending. We want to turn that to Subtract. And then you'll have to play with this offset number a little bit, 
okay? I found that setting it at about five works pretty good for me. You might need to raise it up or lower it until you get your picture to look the way you want it to and the stars when you add them back in. But basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make, create this. I like to go up here and give it an auto color adjustment just to get the color of my stars fixed back up. Then I'm going to simply go and collect Control A to select it all, Control C. See, I've removed all the nebula out of this picture now. I'm going to go over here to my starless image, go to Layers, and now I'm going to I'm going to click, come down here to the bottom, click on this little plus, and create a layer. Go Control V, and I'm going to copy this layer on here, and then. What I want to do is come up here and I'm going to select, and there's one of a couple of different ones. You can use linear dodge or you can use screen, whichever one you like best. I find that linear dodge works best for me, and that's going to allow you to bring your stars back in. Okay? Now, you'll notice the difference is here. Our nebula is much brighter in this picture, but now we've got a lot of stars. I want to get those under control a little bit. I can go over here to opacity and just knock the opacity down just a little bit. And now look what I've got. I've got a much brighter nebula. My stars still look pretty good and this is starting to look like a pretty good picture. Okay, now what I can do, once I'm done with this, I've got it looking the way I want, I can flatten it, then I can come back over here, and I like to, you might be happy with this, this is, uh, um, uh, a lot of people like this sort of golden color in their nebula. I like to bring it out and make it look a little bit more natural, so I'm going to go over here to hue and saturation, and I'm just going to bring this back just a little bit, and I'm going to turn those golden colors to a little bit of a red, okay? And there we go, things are looking pretty nice. Now I can press okay, and from here I can do whatever I want to as far as my uh, further adjustments. I can maybe go up here if I wanted to and uh, make my stars a little bit smaller. If I want to sort of continue to get those stars under control. And somebody would say, well, why do you want to, why do you want to control those stars? Well. The highlight of this picture is not the individual stars in this vast star field, but the nebula that's sitting behind it. So I don't want these stars to distract away from that picture. So I want to maybe cut them back just a little bit. And I can play from this as long as I want and as much as I want until I get the final image that I like. All right, well, let's go over and let me show you the final image that I took of SH2-112. Okay, after doing a lot of playing around with my color balances and the stretches and working on getting the stars just exactly right, this is my final image. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this. It's 12 hours of data uh, captured with my Celestron HSCT. Um, and overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you can see the stars, I've cut them back a little bit just so that we can kind of emphasize the nebulosity uh, in the picture. One of the things I really like about this nebula is this area right in here. I love this dark area of nebula that's sitting in front of this very bright area. I think it gives the picture a lot of texture. You can see back here, there's a lot of dark nebula here. A um, couple of pretty cool looking stars, I guess, that are, that are in here. This one, uh, there's uh, this star right here. If you look at it, there's, a, there's two stars that are very close. I'm not sure if they're technically a double star or if it's just a little bit of an optical illusion, but, but basically you've got a, um, a very, very vast star field in front of this beautiful area of nebulosity, and, um, and uh, overall I'm pretty happy with this picture. This is one of those objects that I don't see come up very often, SH2-12. It doesn't even have a cool name. I don't know. What would you call it if you were looking? I actually have spun this around on several times, just kind of looking at it from different angles, seeing if I could come up with something that this uh, image looked like. And so far, I really haven't found anything. I, don't, I haven't really liked any of the other... Uh, 
orientations here. That one's pretty cool. I guess that looks pretty good. And um, But it really is kind of a beautiful nebula when you look at a lot of cool detail, a lot of things that, that just really make this a, a fascinating object. And so, um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. hope you'll get out there. And if you haven't imaged SH2-112, make sure you get out there and uh, get you some. All right, we'll talk to you a little bit later, and I uh, look forward to my next video. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.